Hi, and welcome to the show. I have been continuing my work on the Raspberry Pi 2 Portable. As you can see here, I'm up to Mark 3. And uh, let me take you through where we're up to. Okay, so as you can see here, the uh, previous version, the Mark II, which used this Flexi iPads backlit keyboard and the nice rather large uh, case that went with that, I have been able to shrink that down into this little unit here. And this is significantly more portable and nicer and easier to use. And the main reason around this is I have changed from that iPads keyboard to a RI keyboard, if you pronounce it that way, R-I-I. -I. Um, this keyboard's significantly better in my opinion with one caveat. So it's constructed much nicer, it's much more rigid, the bottom half of it's all metal. The uh, rechargeable part, so the part that is the uh, battery compartment is inbuilt, you don't use disposable batteries, it's a lithium rechargeable battery. Uh, key touch and everything else is much better and the big win, so if you see the functionality here, okay, so if we're using the actual keyboard and hopefully you can see the mouse moving around on the screen there, maybe not coming through perfectly, maybe just there, yep. Uh, with this one you have an automatic right click button, even though you can do it two-fingered. You have an actual right click button down on the bottom left hand corner and you actually have a left click button which means that you can click and drag things around the screen. So that's a big improvement over what was problematic and troublesome on this iPads keyboard. So let me take you through just on the outside. So the Rai keyboard and the model will be in the description of the video. Uh, I still have the Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi dongle for networking and the Bluetooth adapter for the actual cordless keyboard itself. A uh, little Arduino holder in the corner here. Just a nice little spot for the Arduino Uno. And the 7-inch IPS display, which is quite a nice crisp display. Uh, and let's have a look underneath here. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi 2 with the lid off. Um, obviously the LCD and the small breakout board uh, behind that LCD there, but the main driver board, uh, so ribbon cable coming through into the bottom half of the case, this is the main driver board down here. I did have to remove the RCA, I have it still sitting there somewhere, I did have to remove the RCA connector, uh, it just took up just a little bit too much height. So I've removed that from the board and the power, I'm not quite sure if you can see in there. Okay, so just in the bottom there, I still have the barrel jack connected. This is the barrel jack to the driver board for the display, um, but I've not used it. I've actually tapped off the bottom of that board and just tapped the positive and the negative and run power to that driver board that way rather than plugging in the barrel jack. It took up too much space. So continuing around, obviously I've got the big four amp hour battery in here. I was able to shrink the whole project down and fit the bigger battery in, which is great. Uh, the little spark fun board down here, you can see the little red LED glowing. That's the little spark fun board just down in here. And this is the Pololu power regulator, hooked up the same way as I did in the uh, last video. And the Raspberry Pi to itself. Uh, one of the main changes is this HDMI cable. So previously, as many of you would have seen, I was using one of these. Um, so they're not very long and they're a full size HDMI cable and nice and flat. But the problem is, as soon as you try and put a bend in them anywhere, they take up far too much, far too much space. So what I've done here is I ordered a very fine four millimeter micro, uh, four millimeter thin HDMI cable full sized and it is just enough to be able to snake in and around the project out of the way and that is all the main components driver board battery spark fun board power regulator and the Raspberry Pi itself okay so what about lessons learned doing things differently and yeah there's a bit to this so if you have a look at uh, 
the design of the case in general, I have a habit of trying to print the entire thing in one go. Uh, and that's just for convenience, whether I'm orienting the parts vertically as I print in order to be able to fit more pieces in, um, or I print them flat and just try and get as much as possible in a single print. That does limit your approach. There's certain things that that takes away. Uh, and I probably wouldn't do that again. I I'd know what I know about 3D printing and print what I can, but don't be scared of having multiple parts that you actually have to glue together. Uh, and you have to glue a few together at some point anyway. So one of the main lessons learned is printing parts vertically. If you look at the way you print um, a, a vertical part that has a chamfer or a curved edge to it, and this is, this is the vertical orientation, so this is the print bed here. If you do this, and this is a gradual curve, I have noticed that it throws about a half a millimetre out between this measurement and this measurement. And that can cause, when you're talking about a half a millimetre or a millimetre tolerance for fitting into the display, that causes enough to be able to cause the display not to fit. You've got to get the Dremel out and cut out some space, which is what I had to do on that one. So lessons learned for the future, probably make that a nice 45 degree chamfer on the edges. So that's these edges here that I'm talking about. These are supposed to be rounded. I'd make them a hard 45 chamfer and that would remove the problem of tolerances being a little bit out. Uh, other lessons learned, and this is probably the big one, that is a completely usable and functional Raspberry Pi portable as it stands right now. So here you go, you open it up, you've got your Arduino, you throw a little USB cable in there, and you've got a full Ubuntu uh, operating system and a lovely keyboard and everything's tickety-boo. The problem is, it's not a laptop, and it's not really a handheld, it's an in-between. And what I find is they're not particularly useful. So if this was a slightly larger keyboard, I could type on it all day. At the moment, it's almost hunt and peck. Uh, but if it was a larger keyboard, you could type on it a lot more freely uh, and you could potentially put in a larger LCD. You're ending up with a, a netbook or an, a, a Raspberry Pi laptop. If that's what you want, that's great. The other approach is to come back down to the thumb board, which is the idea right in the beginning, but maybe have a nice little clamshell thumb board derivative, say like a, like a DSi, um, or have the display slide and make it a touch screen display, uh, have it slide backwards and forwards, or have no keyboard at all, have it all on the seven inch LCD. So if you've got ideas on that one, please let me know in the comments of the video and uh, I'll pick a future direction for this, but I want to continue on this because this is coming out all right, even though this is a very rough, rough draft. Um, the hinge mechanisms are working fine, most of the design characteristics are sorted out and we have a functional unit there. But whether I continue down this road, make it bigger into a laptop or make it smaller into a truly portable device, take away some of the uh, functionality like the big keyboard. Um, yeah, be interested to know what you think. Alrighty, so there we go. Continuing on the Raspberry Pi 2 portable and it's getting somewhere at last. Um, so, but that's all I've got time for this week. So please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the next version of this. And thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next time. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.